Hello and welcome to IB Times TV. I'm Leanna Brinder, Business Editor for the International Business Times. Joining me now is Jo Swinson. She's the Minister for Employment Relations and Consumer Affairs. So hi, thanks for joining us. Hi. Maybe you can talk about how um, the government and yourself in particular are working at helping um, the, I suppose, trading environment better for the elderly or for the more vulnerable. Well, we're doing a whole overhaul of consumer law at the moment because it's been far too messy and confusing for people to know what their rights are. And as well as making it clearer for people when they're buying goods and services and indeed introducing new rights for digital content, which of course is a rapidly growing part of our economy, more and more people buying and downloading apps and movies and games, we're also looking at the rules that are protecting vulnerable and elderly consumers, for example, who might fall victim to very misleading or aggressive selling practices. Maybe you've got somebody that comes round to sell on the doorstep and they're in uh, an elderly person's home and we've heard stories of times where the trader hasn't left for a matter of hours until they've had the signature on the bottom of that contract. Well we want to make sure that people know that in those circumstances where they've been a victim of that kind of bullying that contract does not actually have to be honoured. They will be able to make sure that that is voided and they will now have 90 days in which to do that. Because of course it won't always come to light very quickly. Sometimes it will only be some weeks later when perhaps a relative, one of their children or a niece and nephew uh, is, is visiting who may not live nearby and they, they uh, find out that this kind of thing has taken place. We want to make sure they've then got the tools to take that action so that the kind of rogue traders that act in that kind of despicable way to some of the most vulnerable people don't get away with it. Sure and I mean how much does this cost um, not only individuals but the economy at the moment with these rogue trading practices? Well it costs billions. Uh, the most recent estimate was more than three billion pounds a year from these kind of uh, unscrupulous practices and I mean obviously they're not good for consumers who have fallen victim to these but they're also not good for the vast majority of businesses who are trading perfectly responsibly but unfortunately uh, some rogues are, are giving them a bad name and indeed uh, perhaps you know getting unfair fair advantages within the marketplace. So it's good for responsible business and it's also good for consumers to make sure uh, that those people acting in that unscrupulous way uh, are not allowed to get away with it. Do you think there should be more focused and a shift towards finding better compensation or redress for consumers rather than what some critics are saying that we should you know, jail more wrongdoers or put in, I suppose, tougher legislation? Well, I think it is important that, that we have both, if you like. So, I mean, we need to make sure that not only are individuals able to take action and uh, take companies to court if they've acted in this kind of way and that those rights are there and very strong, but we also have enforcers such as Trading Standards who are able to, um, to get redress for consumers and have, we're giving them new powers to be able to order that through the courts, which will also help them to uh, negotiate with, uh, with traders who have acted wrongly, sometimes without even having to go to court. So those kind of uh, enforcement measures to make sure that people can get the money back are really important to the person who has had that bad experience. But obviously where people are systematically acting in a way which is sometimes a, a criminal way, uh, it's one of the most horrendous crimes that happens. And I know from my own constituency, uh, and I know it elsewhere in the country, where uh, deliberately uh, vulnerable people are targeted uh, by, uh, by rogue groups, then obviously it is right that those people do end up behind bars if they've been acting criminally in a way where they've been ripping off and uh, effectively stealing money from, from elderly people, then that's not something that should be allowed to continue. Well, thanks for joining us today and for your time. Very nice to meet you. Thank you. That was Jo Swinson. She's the Minister for Employment Relations and Consumer Affairs.